So we're creating resistance every time we use an antibiotic. So are there alternatives on this table or in the world of plants to antibiotics that I should maybe also consider um, instead of just jumping straight to antibiotics for yeah. everything that I experience? Yes. If you've got a serious gut or other infection, you may need the antibiotic. So let's put that straight away. But if you've got a cold, flu, virus, a viral problem, particularly the airways, you A, antibiotics will have no use at all, and B, as we just said, they just add to the risk of more. Because every time you take an antibiotic, you're growing a small population of that of, of the species of bacteria that's affected who are resistant to that. It's natural selection, you know. So we're creating resistance every time we use an antibiotic. So try, let's try and doing something else, shall we? So let's say you've got a cold. You're feeling the cold. It's got a good name, by the way. So cold is one of the things you feel when you've got a cold. And that's interesting because in former times, we didn't have tests, we didn't have laboratories, we didn't have paramedics, we didn't have people poking things in you. All we could know is what it felt like. And when you've got a cold, you often feel cold and you feel chills and you want to wrap up and you want hot water or you want to have a hot bath. All that in the old language meant that you were cold and what you needed to do was to heat up. Now, you take this fella. This is ginger. It's grown widely around the world. In its original Asian form, it was made extinct around the time of the Romans. So popular was it. And ever since, all the ginger since of this species uh, has got to be going from rootstock because it no longer seeds itself. So this has been the most valuable natural commodity ever. In its dried form, worth more than its weight in gold. And, you know, the reason why all those Europeans ended up in Asia, running India and South, the Dutch and the Indonesia and so on, is because that's where these things came from. That's where the spices came from. And so we decided, you know, like good capitalists to go and uh, control the business. So ginger became very popular over here because we don't have nothing like it over here. The nearest thing we got is horseradish, which I promise you is no substitute for this. 